Even in the internet age, when answers can be found quickly and efficiently, misinformation still spreads, and this is no less true in the galaxy far, far away of Star Wars. What ends up surprising is how widespread some of this misinformation can actually be, and recently I did a video on the Jedi Temple Guards during Order 66, and I dispelled a misconception that the Grand Inquisitor betrayed the Jedi Order prior to Operation Nightfall, and killed a majority of the other Jedi Temple Guards as Anakin marched with the 501st Legion effectively crippling the Jedi Temple's defenses all by himself as a proto-act of being the Grand Inquisitor. This was not true, as it is confirmed that the Grand Inquisitor maintained his Jedi status and his affiliation with the Light Side of the Force until after the rise of the Empire, and he is listed as an Order 66 survivor, not a traitor. But it did get me thinking, what other lies do we believe about Star Wars canon? And so today I'm here to answer that question with 10 blatant lies you may believe about Star Wars. Lies! Deception! You don't believe Count Dooku was once a Jedi. He couldn't assassinate anyone. It's not in his character. At lie number one, and by far one of the most common to appear in the comment section of my videos, is the idea that Mace Windu was Yoda's final Padawan. Uh, not only was he not Yoda's final Padawan, but he was never Yoda's Padawan. Yoda's final Padawan was Dooku, Count Dooku of Sereno. Uh, he never took another Padawan after Dooku, and usually when I mention that in a Dooku video, people will ask about, well, what about Windu? He was actually Yoda's last Padawan, and no, and th th this is a weird one because it wasn't even true in Legends. It's not canon or Legends. In canon, his uh, Jedi Master was Sislin Mir, a Miryalan female, which is special and rare because because Miri Allens are typically and famously racist, who refuse to take on any Padawan who is not also a Miri Allen. Now that's his Jedi Master in canon, but in Legends, his Jedi Master was someone by the name of Tara Se, a Neti female. Uh, neither canon nor Legends is Yoda. Yoda is listed as having trained Windu as a youngling, just like he did every other youngling. But if that would make he and Dooku these great rivals as having both been trained by Yoda, that would make him no more Dooku's rival than that would make this kid here, Dooku's rival. Hello, Master Obi-Wan. I was hoping to be free for uh, life day. Get home to the family. But I guess that's not going to happen this year. Probably not. A really interesting one that I think is a problem to both the fans as well as a falsehood that is actually believed by people who are making Star Wars content and working for Lucasfilm. I, please pay attention to this one. If you know anyone who works at Lucasfilm, please remind them carbonite freezing was not common. Carbonite freezing was first tested by Anakin in the Clone Wars animated series, but Vader suggested it to Boba Fett knowing it would work. Vader was pretty much one of the only people who knew it would work because he had done it on himself. Carbonite freezing was not a common way of getting your bounty in place and like uh, immobile so that you could bring them in alive. That wasn't a thing. And this is something that we see in something like Star Wars The Old Republic a lot where carbonite freezing just happens just all the time. In fact, I even have an ability that is like a wrist mounted carbonite freezer on my bounty hunter character. It's crazy, but I think that that's because Star Wars The Old Republic is more like fantasy wish fulfillment than it is actually a canon Star Wars story. So like, I'm gonna give it a pass there, but we see carbonite freezing happening just a lot of the time in really weird places. It is explainable for an era like the era of the Mandalorian, where Din Djarin does bring in his bounties frozen in carbonite, but that's because the practice was popularized by Boba Fett after he did it to Han Solo. Then a bunch of other bounty hunters thought that Boba Fett was really cool and started copying him. But before that, before Boba Fett, this was not a widespread practice and something that was really only done by Anakin when he was doing that mission in Star Wars The Clone Wars. What if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. The Empire will compensate you if he dies. It's heavier than I thought.
The next heavy misconception is the idea that lightsabers are weightless. Another one that actually tends to come up in my comment section quite a bit. The argument mainly comes from an attempt to treat Star Wars as science fiction. Lightsabers are plasma, this is true, this is canon, and plasma doesn't have weight, which is scientifically true. Uh, but lightsabers are not sci-fi weapons, they are fantasy weapons. I think that honestly, George Lucas decided that lightsabers should have weight simply because the actors in the movies look like they're holding something that has weight. Uh, and Dave Filoni is always trying to emphasize is George's unspoken vision that he always talked about behind the scenes. And uh, since Dave Filoni is the main advocate for the idea that lightsabers have weight in Star Wars, I think that that's probably where the idea comes from. Just an offhand comment from George Lucas to Dave Filoni. Uh, now, do lightsabers actually weigh anything? I don't actually know. Probably not. But they exude an energy that creates some form of resistance that the characters in-universe all refer to as weight or as the lightsaber being heavy. Energy constantly flows through the crystal. You're not fighting with a simple blade as much as you are directing a current of power. We see this numerous times, and one of the most obvious that it's talked about is between Kanan Jarrus and Sabine Wren, where he explains very clearly that there is energy moving throughout the blade, and you have to direct that energy, and that creates some form of resistance that the characters can just interpret as and call weight. We also see this happen in the Book of Boba Fett, where both Mando and Paz Vizsla have a difficult time wielding the Darksaber because they are fighting against the Blade. Now, what does that mean? Well, essentially, as you build a connection through the Force with the Kyber Crystal inside of a lightsaber, it becomes easier to wield, and it feels more weightless. It doesn't become more weightless, but it stops fighting against you, and that resistance it translates as the loss of weight. Another example we can see is the Claymore lightsaber used by Cal Kestis in the Jedi Survivor game. And gameplay director Stig Asmussen also referred to the stance where you will be using the Claymore as a heavy stance with heavy attacks, which wouldn't make much sense or, or would really just be physically impossible if lightsaber didn't have any weight to them, if there was no heft. Cal has to kind of get behind these swings, which wouldn't matter if you were just kind of directing it like a laser pointer. The point is that they are magical weapons of fantasy and not science fiction technology. Lightsabers are not laser pointers. Oh. It gets heavier with each move. Everybody thinks, oh yeah, you turn it on, it's just your thought. Right? Now, actually, as kind of a counter to that last point, uh, the, the other one is that the misconception that lightsabers must be activated through the Force, which would be a fantasy thing, but now, lightsabers have buttons. Everybody thinks, oh yeah, you turn it on, it's just your thought, right? I said, no, yeah. it's a red button. <laughs> it's like a there red it button is. control. This conception probably comes from the fact that uh, when lightsabers are disarmed, they tend to deactivate automatically as soon as the wielder lets go, which we're not entirely sure why. There have been different answers from different encyclopedias and visual dictionaries, but uh, a lot of people interpret that to mean that the lightsaber requires a connection with a force wielder in order to stay active, but this ignores all the times that we see non-force wielders holding lightsabers, such as Finn, who is may or may not be a force sensitive. We see a Mandalorian holding lightsabers in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic as a Legends example. In canon, we also see everyone who holds the Darksaber throughout the entirety of the Darksaber's existence, which, yes, is a lightsaber and would not be activated any differently than any other lightsaber. We also see General Grievous, who's able to wield four lightsabers without any connection to the Force whatsoever. To quote Liam Neeson, lightsabers have buttons, and that's how they turn on. Yeah. It's a red it's like Vader in German means father. His name is literally Darth Father. Another odd misconception huh. is the uh, the idea that Darth Vader was named Vader as a German translation for father. No, I am the father. Now, first off, German father is Vater, not Vader which, I mean, I guess could be a mistranslation or just an anglification, but no, th th that's not why he was named Vader. The idea that Darth Vader was Luke's father wasn't actually, like, set in stone by the time that A New Hope was written. Vader was named that way because V and R are two of the four most menacing sounds in the English alphabet. By the way, if you're curious, the other two menacing letters are K and X, but calling him Vaxer or Vacker is just a little too on the nose to be actually and authentically menacing. Still, they did make use of those letters with the Sith worlds of Korriban and Exegol. R is among the most menacing of sounds. 
That's why they call it murder and not muck duck. Another misconception was the idea that Mace Windu was a Grand Master of the Jedi High Council, which is actually a misconception that does come from Legends. In Legends, Mace Windu was the Jedi Grand Master of the Jedi High Council, where Yoda kind of stepped down for a while, Mace Windu took over, before basically giving the role back to Yoda. This didn't happen in canon, it is not a storyline that has continued, and so in canon, Mace Windu has never been Jedi Grand Master. Up next, we've got one to which we've dedicated an entire video, and that is the idea that Jedi cannot have sex. They can, just not with any uh, connection or emotion. So, as far as like meaningless sex, apparently the Jedi are just totally fine with that. We got a full video on that, go ahead and check that out. Do it. Only I've been both Jedi and Sith, and found clarity in the Force. Only I understand him and his death is my responsibility. Next up, we've got the idea that balance in the Force means equal sides of light and dark. According to George Lucas, light is actually balance, whereas dark is imbalance. Light is as things should be. Everything is in balance. Everything is good. But dark comes along, and it brings along selfishness, which brings imbalance to the galaxy. Because if everyone's being selfless, then you are, there is a balance in distribution of everyone is caring for everyone else. But if you bring one selfish person into the mix, all of a sudden it gets imbalanced because that selfish person is taking while everyone else is giving. You want a galaxy where everyone is giving and no one is selfishly taking. That is why George Lucas thought of the light side of the force as balance and the dark side as imbalance, which actually is an idea that comes from Taoism. This was also reiterated by Dave Filoni when he says the dark side is cancer. That's a quote by Dave Filoni when referring to George Lucas's idea that the light side is balanced, the dark side is, as Dave Filoni puts it, cancer. Remember, Obi-Wan, if the prophecy is true, your apprentice is the only one who can bring the Force back into balance. Are you Mandalorian? I'm a simple man making his way through the galaxy. Did you take the creed? I give my allegiance to no one. Up next, we have Boba Fett is a Mandalorian, which is a one that is a little bit less of a misconception now that Boba Fett has gotten a little bit more focused. But no, Boba Fett is not a Mandalorian in canon. He was in Legends. In fact, he is the reason why we call it Mandalorian armor. But as the Mandalorian culture evolved, it started to evolve in a direction separate from the direction that Boba Fett was supposed to go. And so eventually out of universe, behind the scenes, the two split ways and Boba Fett became his own entity who just happened to wear Mandalorian armor. This is explained in canon by the fact that Jango Fett was a foundling. He was adopted into the Mandalorian culture, and so Boba Fett had the right to inherit the Mandalorian armor. However, Boba has never sworn himself to the Mandalorian creed. Being his own person making his way through the galaxy, he associates in no way, shape, or form with the Mandalorian people or culture, aside from his individual one-on-one -on -one connections with characters like Din Djarin. This is my father, Jango Fett. Your father was a foundling. Yes. Finally, we have Count Dooku was a xenophobe, which is an idea that does come from Legends, but another one that didn't carry over into canon. In Legends, Count Dooku famously hated all non-humans, which was just a part of his, you know, this is why he's a bad guy. He hates everyone who's not like him. However, this is an idea that never carried over into canon. In fact, they tried really hard to refine and deepen Count Dooku's character. And one of the ways that they did that was by giving him more complex motivations and making his evil a little bit more nuanced. No longer is he simply a racist old man with a white beard who doesn't like people who are different from him, but is actually a villain, a true idealist who believes he's doing the right thing and is just going about it in the wrong wrong ways. Canon Dooku does not hate aliens. In fact, he makes use of aliens as the primary force of his separatist alliance. But anyway, guys, those are 10 blatant lies that you may still believe about Star Wars. Was there any I missed? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, because as I always want to know what you, my friends, have to say about our favorite galaxy far, far away. Or if there's any that you disagree with and think are still true, uh, you can let me know that too. Although you are most likely wrong. But that's okay, because ultimately our love for Star Wars surrounds and it binds us and is far more important than being right or wrong. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Or if you learned absolutely nothing new, you can feel free to leave a thumbs down completely guilt-free because that tells me I'm not doing my job. Thanks again for watching. And as always, may the Lord be with you now and forever.